about time, Kevin. I'm sitting here waiting for you. Hi, divers. Alec Pierce, tech tips from Scuba 2000. And here I am in the Scuba 2000 pool. Yeah, we have our own pool here at Scuba 2000, built for scuba training, all the gear, everything's right here. It makes the training so convenient. If you've not had a chance to visit Scuba 2000, I would suggest you do so. It's a pretty neat dive store, if I may say so myself. You can also, a lot of divers do, you can also come out in the evenings, most evenings of the week. You come out, bring out some gear, check out a new camera, new BC, practice, play, whatever. A lot of divers do that. You call us if you would like to learn about that. Anyway, I'm in the Scuba 2000 pool, and that's okay. Uh, I'm old, I don't like cold water. Our pool is 89 degrees. That's like about uh, 30 degrees in uh, Young Duck. Uh, and uh, I'm here for a special reason. Now, this particular tech tip, I want to take a moment to explain this to you, because you're all pretty bright, you're divers. This tech tip was not suggested to me, but it is a tech tip that I'm going to share with you because I see this all the time and hear about it all the time in service. We do a lot of service here. And people come in and say, look, I just had my regulator service by so-and-so down the street and the darn thing free throws all the time. And I'll take a look at that and I'll explain. Okay, well, the service man at your dive store where you took it did not do anything wrong at all. Let me explain. I'll explain to them. That's a common complaint. My regulator free throws. It goes crazy on me. What's with that? Regulators can free flow. However, generally speaking, if they're in pretty, pretty good shape and recently serviced, they should not be free flowing. What we need to do is talk about what's a free flow, what is not a free flow. Let me explain. First of all, this is a beautiful regulator. It happens to be a Steve Pro uh, A700, one of the finest newest on the market. It has a classy gold chrome look to it, uh, which is not so common these days. But if you like chrome, uh, then you'll like this. I had a 56 in Buick. It was all chrome. It was beautiful. But anyway, here we go. So this is a very sophisticated, very easy breathing, uh, high flow regulator. Now you take this regulator, brand new from the box, like this one, brand new from the box, or freshly serviced from your service person. And you take this regulator, pull it out of the tank, jump in the water, and if you put the regulator in the water like this, watch what happens. I can see why you might be upset. You pull it, what's going on with this regular? I just paid $200 to get a completely service this free flowing. Well, you know, I'm doing a little experiment. Push the purge bell out of the water. Just push the purge bell. And what's with that? It's supposed to do that. That is, in fact, an indication that it's properly serviced and is breathing as easy as it possibly can. You notice, by the way, how I stopped it. Just put your finger in the mouthpiece. It'll stop right away. Watch. It's working perfectly in this regulator. So what's with the free flow? Well, first of all, these are very sophisticated, very easy breathing. What's they have a venturi? <coughs> Pardon me. A venturi is simply an application of Bernoulli's principle, which uses the flow of air to draw the diaphragm in. Meaning, in practical terms, when you start to breathe on these high flow, sophisticated regulators, when you start to breathe and the air starts to flow, the airflow that you started was actually used to draw the diaphragm in even farther and give you more air. Great if you want it. If you don't want it, you don't need to have it. Right here is the venturi switch. You see, so you can push that venturi away from you like that. Now there's no venturi. Now watch. No free Now occasionally, even with the venturi switch back, watch this. We go into the water like this. It'll start to free flow. Well, that's because the water is hitting the diaphragm first. It's the same as if you're pushing on the diaphragm. Watch. Same thing. How do you prevent that? Well, it's simple. Put the mouthpiece in first. If you put the mouthpiece in first, the water's not pushing on the diaphragm. It doesn't start. It's just that simple. Nothing wrong with the regulator whatsoever. Now, you can also, with most of these new sophisticated regs, you can also turn down the breathing effort. That has nothing to do with free flow. That's just how difficult or how much effort you required to get it started. Okay, to breathe. We normally set these, in fact, properly set these regulators up with the with the breathing effort, set it as the very lightest. And now we set the regulator so that it breathes with the least amount of effort. You just think about taking a breath and this starts to breathe. And that's what you want. If it does free flow, regulators can free flow. A little bit, a few bubbles coming out, it doesn't seem to stop. You just turn it down a little bit. You know, to stop that little bit of a free flow. So, there you go. If the venturi is on full, and you put it in the water face down, it'll go crazy. Or you push it, it'll go crazy. Stop it with your finger. 
The answer to stop that is twofold. First of all, turn the venturi off. You don't need it on for normal diving. And secondly, most important, put the mouthpiece on the water first. Now that, by the way, applies to both your regulator and your safe second, your octopus. The octopus sometimes will go crazy and freak like mad. Invariably, it's because the diaphragm hit the water first. A little harder for the octopus to turn it over because the octopus hinges from the mouthpiece, doesn't it? So it sometimes will hit the water first. It's hard to stop that. Here at 50,000, with the diver's permission, we explain it to him, we make the octopus very slightly harder to breathe, hardly noticeable, but it stops it from free flowing to jump in like this. For the main regulator, you want it to breathe as easily as possible, and that can happen, that runaway free flow. Now a real free flow is like this. You put the ring in the water, and you see that? You hear that? That's a real free flow. Upside down, right side up, no matter. That's a real free flow and will require adjustment at your dive store. You can try to reduce that by turning the breathing effort in a little bit. It might stop it, but really it means that you should have an adjustment at the dive store. Make any sense to you? Okay, here we go. I'm going to have some fun now. While we sign off, Alec Pierce, Scuba 2000, keep your regulator wet, put the mouthpiece first. Bye-bye.